Hey everybody. Well, there we go. So, we uh, land a floor in the basement, and this might not be for all of you, but for for those of you who are looking at putting in, I chose to put in Pergo Outlast. And the reason is, is this floor comes with 12 layers, two underlayment and 10 above. It's been recommended and it's pretty hardy. Um, it's, they say it's old school. And the reason they say it's old school is because when you're interlocking these, this would be towards your wall, the short tongue. This is the long tongue that's out. Short tongue goes in like this, and you put it in at an angle, and press it, see how it goes, and then you let it go. Now, here's what I want you to know about installing this, and I'll get to some of the tools. You will have this gap. So, I'm installing this floor right here. You see that? There's a gap. Here's what happens. So you get to this end here. What makes it easy to put, what makes it easy to do this is what I found out is you don't want to push these levels down. You want to keep them up. So when you install the next layer, you just, this out of here. You install this here. You push that in as tight as you can. That always has to be first. You lay down the board. I can take my hand, pretty much go like that, and you'll see that gap close up. Take your block, give it a tap, give This a tap, you see that gap right there? There's a little bit. Don't think we're gonna get any more out of it. Because this piece right here has closed up. So that's it. And you're done, but see the gap. Don't worry about it yet. And I'm gonna show you why not to worry about it. So I'm working on the end of this couple things you're going to want to get, and trust me, you do not want to put in this flooring or any flooring without them. Number one, one of these. These are real handy at going in here, and you can hit this with the hammer and shoving the board over. If you do it, you'll get used to it. Trust me, you will get used to it, and you won't need to use it as much as you think, but in the beginning, it did come in handy. You're going to want to get one of these. This sucker is probably about, well, I would say it's better than a foot, probably 16 inches long. And the reason is, this is rubber. Hard, hard rubber. And they'll tell you, there's other people that tell you too, but they are right. When you hit this, you want to go along and go like that. And that pushes that in, all right? And I'll show you. Like I said, you look all the way along here and see that gap? Don't worry about it. Makes it easier for you to install. So right now, we got an end sheet we gotta put in. I flip my board, I flip it. It's supposed to go in this way. I flip it over like this. I put the tab in right to where my, it's underneath my drywall, and I go back to here. I draw a line equal with this finished side here. Alrighty. So I'm gonna take this to the cutter, and here's another tool that you're gonna want. It's very valuable. You don't have to have it. You can use a table saw or miter saw on that, but this little cutter, it's a guillotine cutter. Let me tell you something. 
doing a room this size so I'm doing all this still I got all that done I wanted this I paid 130 bucks for it it is well worth it let me also tell you it will cut the crap out of you so you put your sheet here you line it up with that guillotine cut Cuts it off, and yes, basically the piece you just cut off is basically no good. So we go back down to the floor, to the wall. I put this in tight here. I like to lay my seams right in the groove of this. So you stick it in, lay this even, and I may be just a little tight here. We'll see. Oh, nope, she went through. So, watch that seam. Do that with my hand. Come down here, kick, kick. Now, here's where I was telling you not to worry about the upswing. So, Here's what happens, and I learned this. You put your knee on it, and you'll hear it bend down. And you hit it in. Turn around. Go back this way. Put your knee on it. Go all the way down the board. Walking on it. on it. <coughs> there you go. Now, if you look back, it still sticks up just a hair, which which you're going to want when you put the next piece down. It makes it easier. That little groove, when you get it down, as soon as you get another couple pieces in front of it, now that's actually pretty good there. This has a little bit of a give and it'll have a little bit more. So that's the trick. Tell you something else. Don't bother buying those uh, spacers for your walls. Here's what I've found works good. On my, on my first wall, my starter wall, I got my T-square out, which is, oh, it's better than a uh, sixteenth, not quite an eighth. I put masking tape on the back of it so it protects my wall. Yeah, I'll have baseboard down there, but it's still, I move it out slightly. I put a box or some weight up against it. And now, my next piece goes right up against it. Start it, hit it over to it. And that's how I start the floor. So when it's all said and done, these gaps like this, are gonna disappear when you put your baseboard down. Now, when I put when I'm going to put my baseboard down because they want you because they want this floor to be a floating floor, which it is, I'm going to probably put I don't know exactly what, a 32nd or a 16th between the floor and my baseboard so it will have a slight gap. I do not want it down this tight because I'm afraid it might prevent the floor from shifting, as they say, which is what you're wanting it to do. So, anyway guys, there you go. I'm not a professional. This is my very first time laying this floor. I've got a ways to go, because i got to go to the stairs there. 
Got to go to where the stairs goes up here. Got to go all this way here. And I got to do a little hallway back in there. And uh, so, anyway, guys, that's like I said, I'm not, I'm not a professional, but it didn't take me long to figure some stuff out. And uh, I can literally put down, oh, I can literally put down uh, today, tonight when I got home, I started, I started with this one here. I've been working on it for a little over uh, about 40 minutes and I've got one, two, three, four, five of them down. And I'll probably put, my goal usually is about seven a night. So you're gonna want your knee pads. What I've been doing is I've been, before I start a row, I lay out the panels. They say you wanna lay out and get your uh, consistency. So here I have, what's left, plus I have some over there. So what I do is I lay, I'll cut all these boxes and I'll put, I'll put four boxes lined up across here. And I pick, I pick out of each one. I do not go straight over. I'll pick that piece, put it here, this piece, put it there. You just keep putting them down sporadically so you do not get the same pattern in a floor. It's like you can kind of see like this pattern here, it's the same as this pattern here, it has that crack in it. And so you put two, I had two of those, one there, one there. Uh, I don't see right off the top where another one of those would be. So just, just know that uh, you want to do that for sure. So Anyway, guys, back to it. Knee pads, 16 inch block, cutter. Uh, cutter on Amazon was $140. That block was 16 bucks. You're gonna want a rubber hammer and that little item there I think was about nine bucks. Other than that, and, a, and of course a T-square for your edges, whichever edge you start on. Other than that, that's all you need and some time. I started this project on Sunday afternoon, of course, uh, I was not, um, what I ended up doing when I started this is I put some of my, uh, I had some leftover uh, six, one by sixes, and I cut them down to like a foot, stuck them between the wall and my first layer, so I had a blank space. And then once I got about six, seven tiles out, you could take and push the whole floor back against the wall. And I've got plenty of room behind my half inch drywall for that floor to fluctuate. See here, same. And I'll put trim on top of that and you won't even see that that's there. So anyway, very easy. Uh, I see, if you haven't done it, don't be afraid to do it. I've never done it. This is my first attempt. Um, not too bad. So uh, some, there's some other extra things that you'll probably want to have to do this if you don't have is one of these vibrating saws because as you get, now when I put my trim in, I tried to make a way for that. So I think I did pretty good this one here not looking real good. So I may have to take my saw. You get that in there and you cut it out. So it's not uh, it's not too difficult to do. So anyway guys, thought you guys would be interested. Um, kind of out of the ordinary for for me. I like, I do fixing the basement and all that good stuff. But so yeah. Anyway guys, there it is. Hope this works for somebody who uh, has never put this in before. Uh, there you have it. Talk to you later. Bye.